Last time I, I uh, left you with a curious question to grade Plotinus' use of the myth of Prometheus. <coughs> and what did you find? Time to grade <laughs> Well, he kind of twisted it to his own his own means to pull uh, pull uh, the audience more his way of thinking. I thought Chad did some very fine work. I don't know if I could look at it, but perhaps you could put some highlights and read it, or should I? Don't yeah, worry. I think you're better reader than I am. Yeah, I need I need. Okay. Okay. Four pair of glasses. Yeah. Plotinus, <clears throat> on the soul, confuses his audience with the remark that Prometheus had fashioned a woman, Pandora. However, we find searching out the origin of Pandora that it was Hephaestus who created Pandora and who then was brought to light by the four winds. Therefore, at this point, we give him what kind of a grade? D. <laughs> uh, anyone else? So far, an F. So he's completely wrong, isn't he? Yeah, he's completely yeah. off base. Mm. Could you speak up just a tad? Great, Pandora. Pierre, when you speak, could you speak up just a little bit? Yes. Thank you. Yes. I will speak up. <laughs> so therefore, come on. What shall we say about this indictment that our good friend Plotinus gets a low grade for dealing with Greek mythology? And there are other points equally interesting. Plotinus was also mistakenly, also mistakenly declares that Prometheus refused the gifts of the goddesses. So look, I was looking for some support. Did anyone else do some homework and decide to check it out? Because that is a very important point. Um, he was the we do not agree we're assuming something. We're assuming there is a body of material And it's well known. And to some degree, people believe it. Because obviously, if it's a story of the gods, they wouldn't want to misunderstand it. And therefore, people will to the degree that they have integrity, will reflect on the uh, actual ideas of the myth. And will do their best not to interpret it widely, or they would try to represent it with the kind of integrity we would expect. Isn't that assumption? The assumption we're working on? Okay. Am I mistaken, or did someone say that this particular edition of him was actually only Porphyry's notes? Yeah, it's okay. So we're doing sure. we're doing second hand. Then we can blame the note taker and not the times. That's right. No, he's, no, he's after the right. I just I, I thought but <laughs> the same issue though. Same issue. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. No, same right. issue. But the other issue is that if you assume that the mythology is based upon a a certain well, let's back up a minute. You're criticizing the integrity of the interpretation 
of the myths as they stand in other literature. It is not correct. There's a body of it. Right. At this point, we're assuming it comes out of Hesiod. Right. Right. We're assuming it's sufficiently known for people to believe it and to reflect on it and actually on these on the actual ideas of the myth and reflect on it with accuracy and integrity and therefore will not interpret. Interpret meaning, of course, they're adding and subtracting to the story. But don't you then have the problem of the, of the truthfulness of the mythology? I mean, you can take the, you know, the Hindu mythology, you can take any mythology and that's fine as long as you're accurate with reporting its original and best uh, information. But how, you know, how can you you know take that as a philosopher and do anything more with it, and take it you know as the Bible or the Quran or any other you know story as being truthful? Not the internal differences. You are reflecting on this material. Yes. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. 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 Oh, by the way. Um, Let's say there's a body of religious writing in religion. Let's say there's a body of uh, stories in uh, Christianity. And let us assume they're in the book called the Bible. Then all of these statements would be true. not true for the Greeks. Wow. It's true in the secularism. So whoever not wants true. to believe in the secularism. Yeah. Let me give you another problem. Wait, why? Of all of this language of mythology, um, what do you make of the fact that they have no creation myths or cosmology? By that terms, this does. This does. And wouldn't you agree? A lot of people quickly want to look for the Greeks' view of how it all started, don't they? Yeah. yeah because that's well, what they found in our in their system. Yeah, that's what's the present system. Yeah. Plato, Plato, he picks up the Prometheus myth in the Philebus. And he says, by the way, that Prometheus brought dialectic from the heavens. It's not in the story. Now, I'll make a judgment, therefore. These Greek thinkers, therefore, were very sloppy and they didn't know what they were doing. Or they're using mythology in a totally different way than we expect. They use the desert. Yeah. Can you give an example of the last one? People will reflect on the actual ideas of the myth. Well, can you, can yeah. you give an example of Christianity and how the Greeks did not do that? Forget this, okay? Um, would you agree Christians or people involved in Christian society, they will reflect on the actual ideas in the Bible, and they will try to represent it as best they can accurately, and there should be therefore a collective opinion about it, and the collective opinion should to some degree reflect the text. You mean like apologetics, where they're, they're kind of like discussing how this stuff happened and, right, okay, you have to do that. All right. Defended as something that actually happened. Suppose it's not true. Suppose this is true in Christianity and Judaism, but it's not true in the Greek world. 
Can you prove it? Sir? Can you prove it? I just did. <laughs> if you mean by proof, can we give examples of it? Plato, I just gave an example of what he, how he understands Prometheus. And there's nothing in the Prometheus legend that says that Prometheus gave mankind dialectic. Correct. Yet the whole development of dialectic in the Philetus, there's no parallel in Prometheus myth for such a gift. Well, but Prometheus brought fire. I noticed that. Yeah, and that's somehow connected with the sun. And Keep going there's, to the point of the dialectic. There's, you know, some kind of relationship between the sun and how it works as a symbol of the good See if I and the creation. Yes. Come on now, pull in the dialectic. And without, you know, to me, you know, the, the fire has to do with divine inspiration. Fine. Glad to hear it. I'm okay. Right too. Part of that has to do with the second kind of dialectic that you were mentioning to me earlier, not the first. No. Of enlightenment and our circle that we use to show the 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 one in terms of what's the term now in relationship to the idea of the divine light of being and how can Prometheus in bringing light? Thank you. You see, what that's my colleague is saying is he started, of course, with the point that how could I prove or anyone prove that there is this freedom of Houston mythology? And you, wonderfully enough, said, by the way, I think I can do something that maybe they're doing. They can then take the themes, the themes which everyone will accept, and play with them differently. That is to say, like a musician might take a theme and skip through the different circle of fifths and take on the different qualities as it spins through it. Right? Yes. And you were saying, well, the diet in here is uh, Prometheus meth, certainly fire. You said fire, light, light, enlightenment. Enlightenment even contains that idea of light in a higher level. And therefore, you could say, since, in, since there is such a thing as the dialectic, and dialectic is said in some way to prepare the mind for enlightenment, therefore, it's consistent with this one, two, three, four, to attribute that to Prometheus. Notice, we're not justifying it by going into Hesiod. We're saying the ideas behind these myths are so well known that you can play with them on a sophisticated level to make the points you're making. Now, if we look at certain books on mythology that deal with where the myth is popular in what city or in what island, you can see that in many different islands they would take the myths totally differently. Not totally differently, but sufficiently variable so you still recognize the myth, but it changes significantly as it moves through each of the islands. And time. So I just wanted to bring that up. So this is playing like a Greek. And therefore that allows degrees of freedom and certainly, in this case, with, with Plotinus, a great deal of freedom. That's the point I missed. Yes, That's a great the point deal of freedom. I missed, yeah. Good. So he's only taking the key points that he wants to play with. Exactly. And he's dropping all the others. Brilliant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, let's get into the text. Thank you. Nice work. I'm leaving it on the table. And please look at it later. <clears throat> um, I think the section that we're in on Plotinus is really a great question. Um, <clears throat> Would you agree all the way 
ways in which you can in any way understand this strange object that at least you can say it's like and unlike other things but it must be at some t it must be in time place occupying some space right goes through changes can be in something else like my pocket would you agree all such terms we can apply to this curious little object. Or, if you want two objects, this piece of chalk I have in my hand. Agree? So, as an example, would you agree this cannot be in my pocket without it being there at a certain time, place, space, undergoes changes when it's there. It uh, bumps into other things. This will be my pocket. <laughs> Agree? Mm -hmm. We can make all of those judgments. Wouldn't you agree you've never have been, you've never participated in a talk that was so obvious? <coughs> no. Oh, by the way, what Plotinus is doing is this. So, you think you have a soul. Is it in you? How can you talk about it if you use this language in any way and then treating it like a physical object? Mm -hmm. Because this is the vocabulary or the background or the situation in which you would make comparisons, would you not? So Plotinus is going along and he's going to say, by the way, I'll take each one of these and I'll show you if you can't do it. That's what he's doing. In essence, you can't apply the categories of the physical world to this kind of a problem. That's all. And then he's going to try to say, now, since you can't do that, how can you describe it? What are the other ways in which we can talk about things other than physical things? You know, like, um, what's this? Person. A geometrician. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's holding a piece of chalk and a <laughs> triangle. <laughs> okay. Would you agree he has some skill or some knowledge? Some blood. Is his right, is the possession of this knowledge? like <coughs> the soul does the soul stand t like here is his knowledge often you don't get people can draw knowledge in someone's <laughs> mind but there it is so. 
How would that be different than saying the soul is in man? Is it similar? So he's going to move out of physical language <coughs> and then he's going to use another kind of language to see whether that kind of language will help elucidate this curious problem between the soul and the body. Now we can go through a whole bunch of these sections tonight, right? We can read one after the other, or we could go to where he addresses it <clears throat> in principle. And that's why I thought this evening we could see where he talks about it in principle and then go back to the examples that he uses. So see whether you follow, all right? Um, by the way, let me try another one just for the moment. Uh, <clears throat> Would you agree this is a beautiful picture of fire? Gorgeous. And it's in the air? By the way, is that the way the soul is in man? See, if he's going to reject this stuff and say he can't talk this way, he said, okay, well, I'll try something else. Maybe I'll try talking about as if it's knowledge, or maybe it's the way fire is in air, or maybe, maybe, maybe. So just for a quick one, we're going to jump into 23, um, but first 22. Must one say that the soul is present in the body as fire is present in the air? Pierre, what page are you on? I'm on 150, which is between 149 and 151. Thank you. I like to be accurate. The fire, although present in the air, not present to it, penetrating it everywhere, it's not mixed with it. The fire remains fixed in the air, flows about it. Notice, see this one paragraph, and notice what he does with it in terms of the next paragraph. So he's going to ridicule this idea, applying it here. <clears throat> So we have to see how it's absurd or impossible to apply. <clears throat> Notice he says, that is why I'm in the second paragraph. That's why Plato is right when it is a question of the cosmos, the cosmos, in not putting the soul in the body, but the body in the soul. Ah, you take the body and you put it into soul. Ah, hey, you know what that does? That gets us out of this problem. The chalk in my pocket turns it around, doesn't it? See, the shift here then is, hey, if the it's not you're putting the soul in the body. You've got the wrong way of looking at things. It's you have the body. I'm right? putting the body in the soul. Oh. Then the soul exists. Hey, then the soul exists, and the body then participates in it. It's, There is, he says, a part of, of the soul in the which the body is, and a part there where there is no body, right? There is not body. But there are the powers of the soul of which evidently it has no need in order to live. Look. <clears throat>
this is a paraphrase of uh, Heraclitus. He says, man lives thinking that each has a private intelligence of his own. This guy is saying, hey, when the body is in the soul, part of the soul is not in the body. Oh, well, wait a minute. He's going to go one more step. Then how is the soul connected to intelligence? So wait a minute, if the body is, can, is, is then <whistles> dropped into the soul, but the, the, there's only part of the soul is, is in the body, part is not, then the part that is not, see we can put it this way, um, hmm, my diagram isn't going to work. Here, let me do it here. Here is a picture of what many people believe that the soul is in the brain. Here's another picture of the soul is throughout the body. Here is a picture. Uh, we'll use this one for a moment. Part of, it, part of it is not in the brain, part of it is above it. All right? So part of the soul is not in the body in this picture. I'm assuming we're using the image that the soul is in the brain, but with my wonderful art, I can change that. Now, suppose he goes one more step. then the soul can participate in what is beyond the body and can participate in the realm of in the intelligence. But the intelligence isn't limited to man and therefore it has no boundaries. See, it depends upon how you want to model it. And his goal is to get you out of the thing language, raise the issue, what other language can you use? And this is where he's going. <clears throat> um, this is why he, he says that it really doesn't take much effort, theoretically, to reach enlightenment because the soul is already participating. See, the soul is already participating, and it just got to wake up to it. It's, 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 so, <clears throat> twenty-three. Now he's going into the body. Hey, you know what? The body has various organs, does it not? And in my beautiful anatomy, you can see it. 
They say each one of the organs has got a, what is that? It's an organization, has a certain uh, unity to it, allows a certain degree of functioning. So every part, every part throughout the body, all the organs. <clears throat> And therefore, to the degree that it can receive, the degree to which it can receive it, to that degree it exhibits it. The more you exercise the faculty, the more you're able to then apply and use whatever is available to you in the universe. Each part of the body that is animated and enlightened by soul shares in the soul in a different fashion according to the, apt the aptitude of an organ for this or that function. Well, the soul gives it a corresponding power depending upon its, its aptitude, its willingness to participate. Therefore, it's, we're in the middle of it. So soul is like the ocean and we're fish. Thus in the eyes is found the faculty of seeing, the ears, hearing, the tongue, tasting, etc. So now he's going to go through all the senses in 23 and he's going to land on page 151 with reasoning. <clears throat> And reason, about eight lines down from the top of 151. <clears throat> and reason, which has no dealings with the body, ought, however, to be in relation with these two faculties that are a form of the soul and, re can, and can receive impressions from reason, feeling and sensation. It has to have some contact with it. The faculty of sensing is a faculty of discernment. Imagination is a power. Appetite, impulse, obedient to imagination and to reason. Hence reason is in the head, not locally, but in the sense that the faculties are in the head, use it. So is it, is it correct to say that he's stating that organs of the body, the way in which they participate in the soul is determined by their, their organization? Aptitude. Aptitude. Where is, or uh, power to receive, or power to exercise whatever power it has. That implies an organization that's receptive to... Yeah. So it is the mm -hmm. organization mm -hmm. that determines its aptitude. How does it happen? <laughs> is that what you're asking? Um, no. That's actually more of a statement. Because that's... That's a better question. I like yours better. <laughs> <laughs> um. <clears throat> The fundamental, fundamental principle of all of this stuff, of uh, participating, is really down to one, this one sentence, which is in here as well. Um, he calls it aptitude. Um, okay. Being open receptive, mm -hmm. uh, preparing uh, welcoming um, being open, receptive, preparing, welcoming, 
of having the aptitude the aptitude we could call it the receptivity of engaging There's someone you want to invite over your house, most important person in your life, whoever that might be. Would you agree you'd want to be in this state? It's that same state you have to be in to get enlightenment. You've got to be willing to receive it, got to be open to it, You've got to prepare for it, You've got to clean up your act. That's what he's doing here, see? That's all, that's all under one word, aptitude. Jump in. So. That does that tie into what we were what we were sort of discussing? I think the previous was about theory, the shaping of, of an object or a statue in the form of a god. Yeah. So in a sense, it's basically a, a metaphor for what you're talking about yeah. here. Sometimes you're right. <laughs> Right. I like that. Yeah. You know, one too? time I looked up the definition of organ, and it said that it was a hollow with two open ends. And if you think of psyche as the Hindu use of the suke as breath, mm -hmm. then we're talk Then maybe if you think of it as a an open open thing through which the mm -hmm. breath can easily flow. Um, do you think he's looking at it in that way? More, come on. Um, well, that seems so unphilosophical to think about it as breath going through a hollow thing. Yes, yeah, psyche, the word psyche is connected with breath. Go ahead. Even in the Greek. In the Greek, too. Mm -hmm. Suke, yeah, okay. comes from breath. So is this like some kind of a yoga? That he's talking Watch. about? Watch. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's when I agree. Okay. wasn't very enthusiastic. Oh. That's okay. Yeah, Should that's true. Aha. <laughs> right. Say more about that. Uh, hey, this, oh. is, this is yoga. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But since you've had so much experience doing it, be that way, he said. Mm -hmm. So, look here, if you accept that, now he's got another problem. Given this, <laughs> he's going to turn you around now. Okay, how do you get out? How does your soul get out of the body? And that's why we reach that happy point of section 24. Hold on. How can something get out? Of something that it's not in. Yeah, I agree. Watch. You just got done. You just got done making. This <laughs> Absolutely great right. It's like he's going back to this language. Yeah, the body is totally so. Agree with you. How can you get out of it? Yeah, that's why you're going to read it for us. Oh, no. <laughs> How about it? fair? Yeah, I'll read it. <clears> but, uh, now give it, give it some, some pistachio, as they call it in German. <laughs> Twenty-four? Yeah. What? <coughs> Where does the soul go when it leaves the body? It is no longer here, where there is no longer a receptacle for it, because it cannot remain in anything not naturally made for it. <coughs> it departs when it is no longer infatuated by the body that allured it. Thank you. What did the body do? Allured it. Um, come on. Come on, Sarah. Come on, come on. Right, so the body is like a fisherman. Like a flirt. Yeah, like go ahead. Flirt. Go ahead. Drops it. If it assumes another body, 
it is in it and goes with it wherever its nature has to be and be born. Well. So where does it go? It assumes another body. What is it? Another one. Hey, so what is, he's got it skipping. He's got it skipping from one body to another. Like a By the way, <laughs> we'll hold it for the moment whether he answered the question. We haven't answered the question. Well, go ahead. <clears throat> but there are many places. The place where the soul is... Ought, let's see, say that again. The place where the soul is ought to fit its inner dispositions and the overall pattern that governs beings. Mm -hmm. None escapes the chastisements that it is fitting to undergo because of evil conduct. What? That doesn't fit. Doesn't that just jump? I mean, well, that next paragraph doesn't seem to follow on the logic. It does not follow on the logic. It's your reading, so you don't even need my approval. <laughs> well, I think it's a new subject, okay? Um, I'm not satisfied that he's covered the first subject, but I think he's changing the subject. None escapes the chastisements that it is fitting to undergo because of evil conduct. The divine law cannot be avoided. It has within itself the power to achieve what it has determined upon. Without knowing it, the guilty one is transported to places where it is suitable that it serve its sentence. Carried by uncertain movement, drifting everywhere, it ends after wanderings and much fatigue because of foolish resistance, by tumbling into its appropriate place. And there it offers itself willingly to an unwilled suffering. Law prescribes the amount and duration of penalties. At the same moment that the penalty ceases, the power is given of escaping the place of chastisement thanks to the harmony that governs all things. It is necessary to have a body in order to feel bodily chastisement. Pure souls, which are no longer subject in any way to the allurements of body, cannot in any way be the souls of anybody whatsoever, since they are not localized in anybody, since they have no body, they are where their substance is, their being, and the divinity. They are in divinity, <coughs> substance, and being. <coughs> Do you ask where? Look, there are where these realities are but do not look with the eyes as though you were looking <coughs> for body. <coughs> yeah, what about it now, since you read so well? Well, now I see that uh, two of those paragraphs were preparation for the third, uh, the last three paragraphs. But... Pierre, doesn't that make sense in light of the myth of Ur? Pardon me? Oh, yeah. Doesn't it make sense in the light of the myth of Ur as the soul's journey? All that he's saying, you know, is what the overview is for the soul's journey down, up, you know, and so forth. We're coming back with a lot. Oh, this does go into the myth of Ur. That's right. Mm -hmm. Because but that makes sense this. to me in light right. of that. No, just just one second. Let me try this. What was the question he posed? Where I'll did see. it go? I want to know how he can talk about the soul leaving something that is in it. Hold it. Where does the soul go? Go. Do you want to ask, how does it withdraw from the body? Are those questions different? They're different. Ah, which one does he want to answer in this section? He wants to talk about the withdrawing. Withdrawing means he's going to talk about the process whereby the soul is withdrawing from the body. Uh, read read well, the opening question again, please. He he says that it when that ha he talks about when that happens. Yes. Um, Finish it then. 
when it happens. It happens at a certain time, you know, certain conditions. If when certain conditions are set, it it, it departs or withdraws. But. I don't see where he has dealt with the issue that he appears to have a conflict. Or uh, you can't appear. There's a, well, there's a paradox here because he see. has something departing the body, which in fact is the body is in it instead. It's the opposite. I totally agree with you. But look, right. watch now, okay? Mm -hmm. If we can use this, see? Mm -hmm. Since it's, we might want to know, how does it get out if in fact it gets out this way? That would require an explanation, wouldn't it? Well, first you have to agree that it can get out. Yeah, if it's in. Yeah. yeah. Next question, okay? Okay. Is it a different question to ask, once it's out, where does it go? Different question. And which one does he want to know? He, he did the second one. The second one, not the first. Right, right. He doesn't, he hasn't dealt with it. He assumes, he assumes that it's... How, how does your translation say, um, leave the body? Very first sentence. Depart. Where does the soul go when it leaves the body? Okay. It just says leaves the body, right? It doesn't say it goes out of the body. It doesn't? Leaves doesn't mean go out? No. Do it again, He's, He said leaves does not mean it necessarily that it goes out. No. Yeah. He's talking about... Like a cloud, if a cloud came, you know, where does a cloud go when it leaves Laguna Beach or whatever? You know, it could no, encompass it. Then it would be in Laguna Beach. No, not if it encompasses the whole thing. A cloud could come down over this building and be much bigger. It could cover all of Orange County. And then we could say, where does it go when it leaves the Noetic Society? But it's not as though it was in this room. The room was in it. You could still ask the same question. I think that's what you're getting at, right? Mm -hmm. oh, I see. So wait a see. Is his answer to this reincarnation is his first answer? Right. Into another body. Into another body. And then he has what happens to the pure soul who doesn't that it doesn't reincarnate. Right. Then it goes somewhere else. Agree? Mm -hmm. Bring the myth of Earth. Yeah. Yeah, jump in. Well, he also states at the beginning of the section that um, it departs when there is no longer a receptacle that's ready for it. And when the body is no longer... Pardon me, do it again. I'll read from that. Page, get it on with you. It's uh, page 151, the start of 24. Mm -hmm. And he says, <clears throat> it is no longer here where there is no longer a receptacle for it because it cannot remain in anything not naturally made for it. It departs when it is no longer infatuated by the body that allures it. If it assumes another body, it is in it, and goes with it wherever its nature has it be and be born. That at least implies... Okay, I'll tell you what, why don't you read that section out loud for us? You're on page 151, I presume? Yeah. Where does the soul go when it leaves the body? Yeah, good question. Yeah. It is no longer here, where there is no longer a receptacle for it, because it cannot remain in anything not naturally made for it. It departs when it is no longer infatuated by the body that appeared. If it assumes another body, it is in it, and goes with it wherever its nature has it be, and be born. But there are many places 
the, the place where the soul is about to fit its inner dispositions and the overall pattern that governs the <coughs> Okay. What point would you like to make now? <coughs> Provides a reason for why the soul departs the body. Not with it. Or I guess he, he See, I'm trying to find your question in the text or coming into the text. Or am I making a mistake in doing that? Because we can put the text aside and you can ask your question independent of the text. I guess my question was, um, what is the cause for the soul to part of the body? What is the asking? What is the cause what? of the... What is the cause of the soul? And why? Departing the body. What is the cause for it to leave? Yeah. yeah. And why? Yeah. I like the question. Um, no longer infatuated. It's done. It's finished. <clears throat> Does he give an answer to that, though? Yeah. A curious yeah. answer in the text? Yes. It, it departs when it is no longer infatuated by the body? And the receptacle is not a right one. But wait a minute. Wait. We may not like his answer, but does that answer fit into the word cause? Is, is he saying that's a cause? I think so. Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought. Curious. Well, it, yeah. it, it also... I think he's curious too. Mm -hmm. It also ties into what we were talking about earlier about aptitude. Mm -hmm. If the body no longer has an aptitude for the soul, it's another way of saying that it's that it is um, a receptacle for it because it cannot remain in anything not naturally made for. It. Same question. Okay, what do you, what do you want to say about it? It seems to me that when the body no longer has an aptitude for the soul, the soul departs. More of a statement than I don't know, let me make sure. What do you think? I'll pick up reading or I agree I agree with that that's what it says. That's what said. that's what I was gonna say. So what shall we say about it since that's what it says? That that's what it says. That's what it says. <laughs> and and I, it's a good time. At some point, we, we might have to say, do you accept it or not, and why not? That we might do. Sure. Mm -hmm. But at this point, we do, right now, we just want to see what he says before we try to understand it or interpret it or reject it. And if that's the case, uh, <clears throat> I do believe he's got another problem on 25, memory. <laughs> hey, when you drop dead, do you take your memory with you? Good question? Yeah. Only yeah. if you carry your cell phone. <laughs> no. That's a whole new business. Buried with yourself. No. Yeah. We can get AT&T to develop a new kind of instrument. And when you drop dead, you can take it with you. <laughs> well, Edison tried to develop the spirit telephone. That's all we need. That's right. Wi-Fi. Now, he's got one line in here, so let's make sure we hit it. I do not mean memory, I mean the principle in which memory resides.
Now, I think the point that was made a moment ago, we all know the Republic and the myth of Ur and the Phaedrus and other myths of the afterlife. What does his reflections do about that whole body of material? Because um, now we're into the game of what happens when you exit, what do you take with you? And why is that important? Because, see, if, if man is already participating, on a certain level with sensation, right, thinking, right, there's also a part that's above that, and there's a part that certainly is not contained within the soul itself, because the soul is, in, is connected to the soul, soul in general, or the world soul, and intelligence. So, if it does, if there is that separation and departure, here is memory. Memory is in time. If you're being separated and going into the timeless, you ain't going to have any memory. Wait a minute. If there's going to be reincarnation, and there's some sense that whatever it is you're doing in your next life is connected with what you're doing in this one, then there's got to be some way in which you can say there's a persistence of memory after death. That's what he wants to deal with. So far he's built himself in this sense that if it does separate, there's no need to bring along. There's no point in saying memory exists after separation if you then enter soul itself or intelligence itself. Memory is in the realm of time. The intelligible is timeless. So he's got a problem, doesn't he? And he knows it. Here. Here. Occasionally. Yes. In this case, probably. Um, this translation in the low, I, I was curious as to what uh, term when it, when it says, uh, the very question, the quote you addressed is, I do not mean memory, I mean the principle in which memory resides. Right? Mm. See, see that sentence? Mm -hmm. we, we should first of all understand what is, what it, I guess, if we would make our investigation as we ought, we should first of all understand what it is in us that remembers. I do not mean memory, I mean the principle in which memory resides. Mm -hmm. Well, this translation, Watch what happens. It is likewise worth investigating the question of memory. Whether the souls themselves, oops, I'm on the wrong place. Let me try it. Jump to the right, same parallel passage. But if we are going to carry out our investigation of these questions correctly, we must understand what it is that remembers. I do not mean what memory is, but in what kind of realities it naturally exists. Mm -hmm. On tone, mm -hmm. right? In what kind of realities it naturally stands, right? Which is interesting that that's a that's an on tone. That's being on the level of being. So it suggests a, 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 a metaphysical level beyond uh, beyond what we would normally read into principle. I think. Yeah. So they're saying for what reason? Well, if you have a remembering, that remembering has to come from something, not nothing. Gotcha. But what I'm trying to point out is that it's on the level of being with a big B, not just something that it exists on the level of, you know, what comes into being and passes out of being. So what he's, when he says memory here, He's talking about real, you know, recalling or remembering things which are on the highest level, things which have been on the highest level. But it still, unless we're talking about the principle, can't be nothing. Yeah, I go there too. That's all I'm. Wouldn't you? Know, you? I say can't be nothing. 
if it is the ultimate existence. I agree. I sure wish I could get your point, though. You can't be making the point it sounds like you're making, that it can't be nothing, if it's ultimate existence. I, I just don't understand the point Lynn is oh, making. Oh, no, no. I'm only talking about the principle of memory. Not, there's only, not there's a, only a principle in this translation. There's no word for principle in the other translation, or in the Greek. And that's, maybe that's where we're getting off track here. See, but the question, the point you're raising is that it has to exist somewhere because it can't be... can no. be nothing. No, no, no. By the way, uh, do numbers exist? Do numbers exist? Yes, as I where? guess. In what? In the good. And the beautiful as principles, but thanks to Parmenides, you know we know that it doesn't exist. <laughs> and it doesn't exist only in the head. Maybe, maybe, but that's only at that level. Anything lower than the one is open season. All we need to know from you is whether or not you'll accept whether there are some things that are not. Some ideas which are not in the body or the brain. Oh, absolutely. Well, are they in something? That's what I'm trying to get at. They can't be in nothing. Well, therefore, they must be in something, or it can be in nothing. What do you mean by nothing? No thing. Um, yeah, okay. A memory, no, what? to me, a memory has to reside somewhere. It can't be the physical brain because it's in the soul. Whatever the soul is, there has to be a substance of some type for it to be you know, recorded. Uh, all ideas <coughs> in the brain. No. Oh. Some or not? There's no ideas in the brain. No ideas, okay. Mm -hmm. Then it must be somewhere. Yes. If they're not in the body or the brain, where are they? The soul. Huh? The soul. Oh. And the soul's ability to remember or to utilize the soul's ability to think yeah. in so its organs. If they're in the soul, that's yes. some place, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And um, is the soul someplace? That's, you know, the $64 question. I'm not no, trying no, to no, answer no. that. I'm going to try it. If everything okay. has to be it, in something, then where's the soul? You need intelligence. This is where he steps in and says you can't use that language. Right there. No. Okay. So therefore, in memory, um, see, um, I think this is a good one. Okay, this is a good one. You see. Um, let me go back to a point we were into last week. When we were talking about, he touches on a whole bunch of very interesting subjects, including astrology, does he not, philosophical midwifery, and all sorts of, remember we had five ideas on the board? Let me ask you, how does he reason about them? How? See, how does he do, how does he develop them? Well, that's difficult. Right? But here we have an easy example. We all see the problem with memory. The biggest problem with memory is, hey, <laughs> when you drop dead and if the soul does survive in some sense, does it take a long memory? Well, a lot is at stake. The whole idea of reincarnation, everything is at stake. So here we have a treatise on memory. Now, memory is going to deal with the problem of 
reincarnation. Now learn. Stay with uh, 25 for a moment. Notice the first question only. Let us come now to memory. Does it function in souls when they are departed from earth? Okay, let's go. Here's earth. All right. Here's the soul. Here's the corpse. That's you. All right. Got the question? Stay with it. Does it function in souls when they are departed from the earth? Now, would you agree you're going to expect a certain kind of answer? Yes. Okay. Right. It should go back and answer this question. It should do it in enough detail so that you can then talk about what Plotinus thinks about this issue now that we have this one section. Did you ever ever get a chance of grading Plotinus on mythology? Anyone ever do something like that? Oh, we did that earlier. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, then you've had some experience grading Plotinus. Is that not right? Okay, give him a grade for memory. I don't know yet. See, you want to generate as much many questions as you can about this issue. You don't want to lose any of them. Then you want to see what he contributes to this issue. We want to see the steps in his reasoning that should elucidate the subject. And at the end, we should give him a break, should we not? Depends on what standard you apply, doesn't it? Here? Mm -hmm. Because um, didn't we say that he see it? Well, he, is, is it not the case that he see it's like one of the major religious writers of, of that, of the Golden Age? I mean, preceding the Golden Age by, uh, you know, hundreds of years. And so he, he then would be, he's like the oldest source we have for that kind of stuff, barring the Orphic hymns or something like that, right? Mm -hmm. so, so if he, if, um, and Plotinus would have had that, one assumes, as available to him as anyone else, mm -hmm. then he doesn't get a good grade for memory. He might be doing something else entirely, but he would fail as far as memory is concerned. Oh, wait a minute. Would you agree someone count the number of paragraphs? I suspect there are nine paragraphs. Are they not? Yeah. Let's give them a grade for each paragraph. Add up the grades, divide by nine or ten. Oh, the one. Let's see. Nine paragraphs. We're only, at, we're only at two. Thank you. Want to read? Go ahead. The first, first paragraph. Paragraph one. Yeah, number 25. Let us come now to memory. Does it function in souls when they are departed from the earth? From earth, does it does it remain solely in some of them? If so, do the souls remember everything or only some things? Finally, does memory exist forever, or does it disappear a certain time after the departure from the body? Would you agree? We now have a set of questions that follow this issue for it. Yes or no? Agree? Mm -hmm. Yep. Good. All right? Now, I like them myself. Uh, <laughs> but uh, the second question isn't needed, is it? Because if it exists solely in some of them, then it's not in this dealing with this issue. We could just drop that. Okay, good, good, good. Good.
So that's the first paragraph. We got the four questions. Got them? Keep them in your mind. Okay. Uh, a couple of readers. Barbara, want to jump in on that? Since you added something. Sure. <coughs> if we would make our investigation as we ought, we should first of all understand what it is in us that remembers. I do not mean memory. I mean the principle in which memory resides. The definition of memory has been given elsewhere and is repeated everywhere. But what is the nature of that which has memory? That is, what is what it is necessary for us to lay hold of. That is what it is necessary for us to lay hold of with exactness. <coughs> if the memory is memory of something... Hold it, just that paragraph. Okay. <coughs> Has it advanced it, yes or no? <coughs> no. Just ask another question, what <coughs> it remembers? Okay. What is the nature of that? Third one. What did you do? What did you decide? That he didn't advance the okay. cause, he just added more questions. Added more questions. Shall I read the third? Thank you. Okay. If the memory is memory of something acquired, is knowledge or impression, it cannot exist in impassable and non-temporal beings. Hence, one must not ascribe memory to the one, nor to the intelligence, or being in which time is not, but only eternity. They have neither before nor after. They remain always as they are in their identity without undergoing the least change. Uh, does this add to our issue? It's question. It knocks out a couple possibilities of yeah. things which do not have memory. It says what does not. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's a discussion on what does not. So it's negative. Right. So it's negative. Right. And therefore, would you agree we need another reader? Sure. Or do you want to go for one more? I'm, yeah, okay. I'll read one more. How can, how can a being which is identical and forever like unto itself have recollections? It does not have, nor does it retain at one moment, a state different from that which it had previously. It is not a succession of thoughts, so that in the state or the thought which follows, it could remember the state or the thought that preceded further argument for what's he doing in there same as he did on the preceding one yeah it looks like it's a further argument for why it cannot be the the one intelligence or being especially the latter two so now we're in the fifth one we need a reader who wants to jump in. Go ahead. And yet, what would prevent its knowing the changing of other beings, and for example, the cycles of the world without itself changing? This is what would prevent it. If it followed the changing of beings that are changeable, it would think first of one thing and then of another. The act of remembering comes from that which is thought of different things. As to the thoughts it has about itself, one must not say that it remembers them, for they have not come to it in such a way that it has to lay hold of them in order that they should not depart. If it did, it would be fearful of seeing its own essence escape it. Therefore, Come on, 
idea of cycles, does that advance the notion or does it not, Joy? Oh, I'm not sure. I... <sighs> does it deal with this issue? Here's the issue, remember? Four questions. Right. Well, it's more descriptive, but I don't think it really moves us along too far. I think it's can't have it both ways. No, no it doesn't answer Thank those you. questions. Six. Now he deals with remember, agree. No. For the soul as well, the words to remember ought not to be used in the sense that one says it remembers its innate ideas. When it is on earth, it possesses these notions without having actual knowledge of them, and especially is this so upon its arrival in the body. What of when it achieves actual knowledge? The ancients seem to apply to this state the names of memory and recall, but it is a type of memory very different from that we are studying. And time has nothing to do with memory taken in this sense. So he's saying there's a certain range of ideas of memory that he is excluding. Without going into them. Wow. Right? But he's pointing them out. Good, 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 good. Seven. Want to read? But perhaps, you know? mm -hmm. yeah. But perhaps, is that right? Yeah. Yeah. But perhaps. Yeah, but talking. perhaps you got that great. It's a long paragraph. So <laughs> <laughs> hold your breath. Go ahead. But perhaps we are talking of these matters rather too easily and without sufficient examination. Do memory and recall pertain to the soul as such? Or to a well, how about that one, one sentence? Would you agree? Yes. yes. Everybody agrees? Yeah. No. Good. Mm -hmm. Okay, next one. You're going to take another one? Good, good. Do memory and recall pertain to the soul as such, or to a soul less enlightened, or to the composite of soul and body? In what conditions and at what moment does this soul, if it is the soul, and this animal, if it is an animal, receive memory. Well, we're all there. Questions. It's not judge fair. it. Come on. More judge questions. it. More questions. Just more questions. It's easy to answer that one, isn't it? Yeah. Why? Because it's two questions. Just ask two questions. Good. 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 So we now at the final paragraph, agree? <clears throat> we must then take up our inquiry again from the beginning. What is it that in us has memory? If it is the soul, it is one of the faculties or one of the parts that remembers Right. If it is, if it is the soul, is it one of the faculties or, or one of the parts that remembers? If it is the entire animal, how does it remember? What do we call this animal? Besides, is it the same in that? Right. Besides, is it the same in it? 
that perceives things sensed and, and uh, things thought? Uh, or is there a faculty for each of them? Uh, how does he end? Same way you started. Same way you started. Four questions. Four questions. Mm -hmm. Take a look at them. Well, some of them are. Is a repeat? I think. What is what is the nature of that which has memory is very similar to mm -hmm. what is it in us that has memory. It seems like. So, what's he doing? <clears throat> Look, let me suggest something. If he wants to explore <clears throat> the nature of the soul and the body, he must also talk about, watch now, the range of the subject. <clears throat> we do not do this. They do it. This is a dialectical exploration of Plotinus is taking it through. This is what he does, right? He has to talk about the nature of the soul. In order to talk about the nature of the soul and the body, he has to talk about um, to whatever degree he does that, it's not enough. He has to talk about the relation of the soul to soul. He can't do that unless he talks about can't do that unless he finally talks about that's what he does See? <clears throat> he has to cover those so we're still going away, we're still looking for this answer. <clears throat> and we want an answer to this quick. He's not going to do that. He's got to do this first. And that's why you don't get to the idea that he needs, which is the idea of the soul and its relationship to the body until you get into 27. In the meantime, look what he's covering. He's covering these areas, the intelligible. That's what he's doing. Cycles, right? Which is a, I, I forgot to put that in. Cycles, isn't it? Uh, uh, soul and but he sometimes calls um, nature principles. That's a zeitgeist, if you want, or, or whatever goes through nature and cycles, the power of cycles in nature. So he has to do that. So he's got, look, he has to have five levels. That's the way they think. That's the way they approach the subject. So take a look 
Now for a moment at uh, 27. The whole of 26, the whole of 26 is nothing other than the conclusion that memory pertains to the soul. That's what he's doing, right? Memory pertains to the soul. That's <laughs> okay. 26 perceptions to deal with that. Because he has to root that in it, see? He has to hear it. He has to put it in there. Therefore, 27, okay, now that I've done that, and I've shown by heavens our conclusion that memory pertains to the soul, small s, Small s means it's in, right, not the big s, little s. Therefore, he's going to have to talk about it in terms of the categories we agree on 28, 29, sense, perception, because he's in the body. 30, he has to go into ideas, concepts. 31, he goes back to the idea of soul and memory, finally. 32. And you can try to wrap it up, therefore, in 31, 32. That's what, he, that's what he thinks. So, when you go through a subject with him, this is the way he's going to approach it. He's going to leave us behind. We're going to be confused. Why is he doing this? This is a dialectical way of studying. And within it, remember, subject you have to talk about, you have to talk about it itself. Then you have to talk about its, its effect on other things. Then you have to talk about its effect among other things. And then their relationship back to their source. So he has this positively, right? These are all the categories that have to be positive. Then he has to tell you to what it is not, negative. He has to go through both. That's why we have a bunch of negative categories, right? No, no, it's not this, it's not this. He's playing this game. It's the dialectic. So what is soul? Right? Oh, in itself. Oh, if there is such a soul, whatever you think of it, how does it apply to other things? Oh, if other things have it, how do they relate among themselves? Oh, and then how would they relate back to the source if they recognized it? Oh, 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 and when you do have it, must you not relate it to its metaphysical categories? These are metaphysical categories. Then, remember now, if you want to do it faster, and pardon me, better, for each one of these, there are three things you say about each. Positive, three, three, three. You have to say something true about it. You have to say something that's impossible for it. You have to say something that's both true and false about it for each one of these. And then, now the, the negative side of this is not 
its absence. It would be, if it did exist but did not function the way in which you have described it, what would be the effect? So it's not opposites in the way we talk about it. Okay. So this is the way he's going to approach it within these categories, and that's why it looks like a mess. <laughs> And therefore, we do not agree, we would be in good shape to wrap it up next time. Yes. And then judge them. Right. Okay. Does it in a very That's right. organized fashion That's right. so that you can see each of the groups together. That's the difference between Plotinus and Proclus. Plotinus is on That's right. scattered, man. No. But if you see, if you understand that, that this is a structure That's that they are taught, I didn't know that. he bounces within it. I did not know that he did that type of dialectic. I thought that was only broken. Cool. Thanks. It's a powerful hunk of work. Yeah, we're, we're going to scan it. You are? Yeah, and then we're going to make it Thank searchable you. so then everybody can have it on the Woo! Oh, oh, you're going to make Marty it has a professional.